Welcome to Electron Line. Here we're going to talk about the Stefan Boltzmann Law. It is the law that explains how we calculate the radiation coming from an object, and we're talking about the total radiation of an object based upon its temperature and its surface area. Now the way that was done is by starting out by saying that the intensity per unit area can be defined as the integral of that Planck equation, that black body radiation curve, which we saw in the previous video, and here it is. If we integrate over all of the wavelengths, we should get the total radiation of a body. Well, we're not going to show you how to do the integral. It's a very complicated integral, but this is the result of that integral. It is 2 pi to the fifth, k to the fourth, divided by 15 c squared h cubed times t to the fourth power, which can be written as the constant, the radiation constant, sigma times t to the fourth, where the Stefan Boltzmann constant is defined as 5.67 times 10 to the minus 8 watts per square meter per Kelvin to the fourth power, which means that this quantity right here is equal to the Stefan Boltzmann constant. Now we're going to try to find out if this indeed does give us the units of watts per square meter per Kelvin to the fourth power. Well, K is defined as 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23, and that would be in terms of joules per Kelvin, per molecule, but we don't have to write per molecule. All right, now that we know that, let's go ahead and plug everything in and see if we get the right units. So 2 pi to the fifth, k to the fourth, divided by c squared, well, we have a 15, c squared, h cubed. h is, of course, Planck's constant. And the units for that will turn out to be as follows. Now, 2, pi, and 15 do not have units. Those are just constants. But k has units. k will have units of joules per Kelvin. And since it's to the fourth power, it'll be joules to the fourth power times Kelvin, or divided by Kelvin to the fourth power. In the denominator, we have the speed of light squared, which is meters squared per second squared, and since it's the denominator, second squared goes to the numerator. And then we have h, well h is defined as 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. And so let's plug that in here. So we have joules cubed in the denominator and seconds cubed in the denominator. And somehow that needs to converge to watts per square meter per Kelvin to the fourth power. Let's find out. We have joules cubed and joules to the fourth power, so this cancels out with that. Second square, second cube, this cancels out with that. Let's see what we have left. So this can then be simplified to be joules divided by Kelvin to the fourth power, meters squared, and then we have per second. We still have a second in the denominator. Now, joules per second, those are units of watts, so this cannot be written as watts per meter squared Kelvin to the fourth power, and sure enough, that is indeed the units we were looking for. So those are the units for the Stefan Boltzmann constant. Now, what about the equation? Well, here we have the intensity per unit area is equal to the Stefan Boltzmann constant times temperature to the fourth power. Now, when we bring the area over here, we can say that the total energy radiated by an object is equal to the Stefan Boltzmann constant times the surface area times the temperature to the fourth power. There's still one factor there that's not part of the equation. There's another constant, the constant of emissivity, which is a number, no units involved, between 0 and 1. Most typically, it's close to 1 or exactly equal to 1, so therefore sometimes it's ignored. But there are objects that don't have emissivity equal to 1, so there will be a small degrading factor in the ability for an object to radiate. So this is the equation that tells you how much energy per unit time, power per unit time, I should say, or power, which is energy per unit time, is radiated from an object that has a certain surface area and a particular temperature in Kelvin, of course. And it all came from taking the, the uh, black body radiation curve that Planck came up with from Planck law and integrating it over all wavelengths 
to give you the total energy radiated from an object. And again, the units match, it does work out.